the previous the day before that we had a meeting all the lads who'd been out on strike that we was going to uh, assemble I think it would be about half five in the morning and we would get the banner and we would march through them pit gates with pride and never heads held up high and as we did do that there was uh, one or two I don't know who did uh, been out all the time or whatever but we got a good reception going through and it would it was a it was a how can I put it it was a hard thing to do but it, I think we'd served our purposes what we we tried our very best the national executive met at Yorkshire and when the announcement was made that we were to return to work we were in the soup kitchen straight facing Golden Cholera when we heard the announcement had been made, I think it was on the Friday afternoon that we were to return to work. I don't think it was the right decision, but it's the majority decision now, it's not to buy by it. I think it's unfortunate, I think we should have stuck out. But nevertheless, the feeling was that we'd go as far as we could go and we couldn't get any further. I think it's tragic. There was tension when we went back between the lads who were on strike and the lads who weren't. I think at Goldburn, the majority had been on strike at some time or other. I know some had gone back before the strike finished. But there was a bit of a Demonel's attitude, especially in the early days after the strike. I think this country's gone downhill all the way. And it's never going. And it's going to get worse. And it's going to get worse with this government in now, which they've started already. We're not manufacturing anything anymore in this country. We're, we're, we seem to be a nation of re, uh, shoppers. Um, that's where all the jobs are, you know, in the retail business, as does Tesco's, uh, Sainsbury's and that. Um, I, I don't think there's been many lessons learned as regarding uh, the, the political parties. Really, people today need to realise that the only way is they, you know, but to act against tyrants like Thatcher and McGregor is to stick up and fight to them. Investing day in 1947, what it is, that's when the mines were nationalised. There was over a thousand mines, and it's still reflected. The reason I went to abroad in 1971, I knew then in 1971 that I could not work in the mines till I was 65. I went abroad to look for a new career in the mines, namely New Zealand, South Africa and Rhodesia, or Zimbabwe as they call it now. And I got a job with Anglo-America in Zimbabwe, but I didn't like the place. But I knew then in 71 and before then that I was in a declining industry. All the industry now coming in just seems to last for 12 months and then it, it's phased out. There's nothing solid, is there? That it, it's, we don't have a history anymore in this country. We don't have anything we can be proud of anymore. Um, people say, well, would you want your son to go down the mine if they were still opened? At least they would have a choice. Everybody had that choice taken away from them, didn't they? When they closed the pits. I was probably one of the lucky people. that I had a friend um, who could offer me a job in engineering. Um, and it did do. So I, I was only out of work for about three weeks and then I started my new job which I was very grateful for because suddenly you had I don't know how many hundred thousand people looking for the same jobs um, you know to this day there's people still not in work basically all unions uh, they're not powerless but they don't have the same clout there's not the same membership there's you know, the, there's only a couple of strong unions now, which would probably be the NUR and ASLEF, uh, the Railmen's Union, obviously, uh, which is ARMT. Um, and I think it's it's left them wide open. You know, they don't have the same influence. Um, they don't have the same membership numbers. There's unions gone to the wall. And what's the beat the man is every union will come after was slapped down. The system were there for breaking a strike and people now are positively terrified of going on strike because they're frightened of losing the job.
In the end, there were more camcorders than colliers to witness the end of Parkside, the pit which refused to go gently. Last year, Parkside was occupied not by miners, but by their wives and mothers, a vain attempt to save it from closure. But today, the only red flags at Parkside were waved by demolition men. It was just like when we, when we all worked there together, it was just like one big family. You know, it's all gone. All gone in less than 10 seconds, the last remnant of the Lancashire coalfield. Paul Jones, ITN, Parkside Colliery.